Hi friends, how are you today? I hope you're doing fantastic. I'm having a great day. Um, we had rain off and on all night long. It was a real proper storm with thunder and lightning, which we love. And this morning um, I had an early lunch with one of my dearest friends. Um, and we talked for two hours. That was awesome. The food was excellent. I had a Cobb salad. That doesn't sound very exciting. But sometimes, you know, something will just hit the spot. It was so good. Um, I have a freshly made iced coffee. Yeah, I'm drinking coffee at 2.22 in the afternoon. Oh well, it's summertime. It's not like I have to get up early in the morning and go to work or anything. So party down, have an iced coffee at 2.22 in the afternoon because I'm crazy that way. Yes, I am. So I have some vintage fabrics to show you and some patterns that I would pair them with. Um, We've been selling, sometimes we sell out of a fabric before I get a YouTube video made, which is totally okay, but um, if we didn't sell out, this is Nutmeg, she'll start growling at me in just a minute. She's a little bit hateful, but I love her anyway. I know, I know. You'd think I would feel really rejected, but I don't. She's just super grumpy. She never scratches or anything. In fact, she's still hanging around my feet. Um, she just, she's just a grumpy girl. Um, she wants petted when she wants petted. Like this morning at, I don't know, three or four in the morning, I suddenly have a cat who's purring madly and so excited to see me and wants me to pet her. My husband's out of town, so I don't know. She was wanting some attention at the crack of dawn. Well, before the crack of dawn. But anyway, that's one of my cats. Her name's Nutmeg. I love her. Um, so, sometimes our fabric sells out before I do a video on it. But um, all of the fabrics that I'm going to show you today, I think I have six of them, are already in the shop and ready to go. Um, one of the cool things, and I know that you understand this, but to me, one of the very very coolest things about vintage fabric aside from the fact that it's good for the environment to use something that is already created and there's nothing we can do about it the resources have already been used there it is we might as well make something useful that will replace something that we might buy you know at you know Macy's or Dillard's or Target or Walmart or wherever you shop and so there's that but there's also the knowledge that it is highly unlikely that anyone else has the fabric you have. That's a cool thing to me. I'm not really a bandwagon jumper. I don't like to, you know, have a bunch of um, logos all over myself or all over my car. Um, and so to have a fabric that no one else has, it just appeals to my rebellious nature. Um, I don't really, really do anything rebellious, but I like to consider myself a rebel. That, thus, coffee at 2.25 in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, first fabric. I bought this fabric not because of its fiber content. This is probably it has the hand of a taffeta a silk taffeta I have not done a burn test on it do I think it's silk not really it could be um, I am frequently surprised by fabric I had I found fabric just yesterday that I was drawn to because of the print and I put my hands on it and um, I I liked the feel of it. I could tell it was high quality fabric. You just know. And, um, but I thought it would have been some kind of cotton blend. It still had the tag on it from Pendleton Mills. It's wool. And it's such a lovely wool that you can't even tell it's wool when you touch it. So I'm not saying unequivocally, unequivocally that this is not silk, but my guess would be that's, this would be like a nylon acetate taffeta. 
So um, I'm not going to claim that it's silk, but why did I buy it? I bought it because of the beautiful watercolor floral print. It's just, oh, that's the wrong size. Sorry, sorry guys. Is that the right side? Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> I feel like whatever side you're looking at looks the brightest. I thought I had a clear wrong side and right side. But I'm, I think I'm showing you the right side. And it's a very subtle difference. I mean, as long as you cut this pattern out consistently with whatever you made, um, th there's not a huge difference. This is the right side though, but I just love it. It's just, just watercolory floral goodness. It's very stiff. You can, can you hear that? Taffeta rustle. Okay. So this is not a drapey fabric. Um, it has a very stiff, crisp hand. It's incredibly lightweight. So, you know, it has that whole taffeta thing going on. Let me get that set aside and show you what I might make with it. Whatever you make with that fabric, it needs to be a structured garment. This would be ideal. Um, I would probably line it or I would wear a cotton, a full cotton slip underneath it. But this with its A-line um, 60 silhouette would be absolutely perfect in that. You could do a black velvet collar or a navy blue velvet collar that would be adorable. You could make the bow. Any of these views would be perfect. This is 1609. Um, I have not made this pattern yet. I bought it several years ago. I think it's absolutely adorable. And for those of you who want to know about the shaping, it does have fisheye darts in the back as well. And um, it's got a back center seam and it's got a front center seam. So even though this is a shift dress, it isn't really boxy. Um, it, you know, it's not a boxy dress. I think, no, it just has regular bust darts. I was thinking maybe those were French darts, but it just has regular bust darts. Something like this would be ideal for a stiff fabric like that. Also, of course, any kind of fit and flare dress with a pleated skirt. I wouldn't gather that fabric. I just don't think it would show to its best effect. I would do box pleats and I think it would be beautiful. So that's what I would do with that fabric. Okay, now this fabric is pretty much the exact polar opposite of the fabric I just showed you. The only thing that I think they really have in common is that they're both um, synthetic fibers. Um, this is a crinkled um, crepe. I don't know if you can see the crinkle in there. It's really hard to show. It's very subtle. It's not like um, crinkled all over like gauze. It just has the crinkles kind of crushed into it. And you can see them when the light hits it. It's like they're veined throughout. Um, this fabric is drapey and flowy and light and it's a beautiful um, lavender shade. Um, it has a shiny ur side. I wouldn't call this a shiny fabric. I would call this a fabric with a sheen. Um, and then like most crepes, um, it has a more matte side. There is no real um, front or back. You would choose whatever you wanted um, to be the front. You know, if you wanted it shinier or less shiny, um, that's how you would determine. So what would I make with that? The um, little top, this kind of uh, shell tank top here and the skirt are both suitable for um, shiny, flowy, slinky fabrics. And so how fun would it be, this whole pattern? I love this pattern. Um, I think this little jacket is gorgeous. Um, how fun would it be to have this uh, top and the skirt and then this jacket in navy blue? 
or maybe if it was a very um, subdued uh, affair, a beautiful gray, um, a gray Dupiani, if it's a very fancy affair, that would be, you could wear that to a wedding. Um, so anyway, um, that's what I would recommend. Anything light, anything flowy, anything drapey, nothing super structured for that fabric. And this is Simplicity 1467. This is a so stylish pattern from the authors of Threads magazine. So these are supposed to um, give you some basic sewing skills, which I can always use a brush up on. I, I never um, am offended by that. This next one is different from both of those. It's much drapier than the first one and um, it's much firmer than the second one. I call this a file um, weave. It's kind of reminiscent of an ottoman weave. The weave is horizontal across it. Um, and this is a bottom weight or a jacket weight fabric. Um, it, what it looks like is grosgrain ribbon, even on the selvage. I don't know if you can see those little, like on Peter Sham ribbon, that's exactly what this looks like. That's exactly what these selvages look like. Um, but this has a beautiful shine. It is actually shiny. Um, it's a bottom weight. And it has a nice drape. And of course, it's in my favorite color. So that attracted me immediately. So for that fabric, this is a similar pattern to the one I just showed you, although this one is more structured. This one has darts in the front, well, princess seams, let's see, all these seams in the front and in the back of both the top and the tunic and the dress, there are fisheye darts and in the back of the skirt, there are four darts. Now that is not a big piece of fabric. All the exact yardage is listed in the store. Um, and I was thinking this pencil skirt, this would be perfect fabric for a pencil skirt. It would not have to be lined. You wouldn't have to worry about anything. I don't even think that it would stick to your tights in the winter. Not that I really think that's necessarily a winter fabric, but, um, that is not a fabric that I would say had to be lined. Um, so that's, even this dress, if there was enough of it, which there isn't, but a structured dress like that, that would be really cool. That would turn this dress into a special occasion dress. It has the little um, tulip sleeves and it has the little tabs there. You could put some fancy buttons on that. But I don't know why I'm talking about that because there's not enough of that. But if you had this dress, now that you've seen that fabric, if you had this pattern and you just got the idea, you could go get your own and make that up. I bought this fabric simply because it's Shally. Rayon Shally is probably my favorite fabric and I adore linen and cotton. I love linen and cotton. But Shally has many of the same properties of linen and cotton. It's so comfortable to wear. It's a natural fiber. Um, it's, it's breathable. It doesn't make me all sweaty. You know, I'm in those hot and flashy years. I don't suffer extremely from hot flashes, but I do get hot um, from time to time. And I did even in my 20s. I mean, I've never liked like polyester to wear. It just doesn't feel good to me. Um, but it has a glorious drape and I just can't get over the drape of Shally. It also, a lot of people say that Shally is difficult to sew with because maybe of its drape. I find it incredibly cooperative. With your hands under the sewing machine, it, you can just move it around and avoid tucks because it is so malleable. I mean, it just does what you say. It, it doesn't really have a mind of its own. I feel like it's a real um, go along, get along fabric. And it's like, oh, hey, yeah, I'll do that. Um, yeah, I'll do that. 
I'll, I'll press beautifully. I'll let you manipulate me and I, you know, set in a sleeve that's going to be completely free of pin tucks. I'll let you do that. Um, and so I just love it. Um, this one is a beautiful fall chalet. Oh, and the third, well, the 18th reason why I love chalet is because there's simply no end to the amount of prints. Um, people just love to make printed chalet fabric, and I just love to buy and wear printed chalet fabric. Um, and so this is a gorgeous fall or autumn chalet. Um, it, it has reds and mustard, and that's kind of a raspberry, kind of a wine berry red moving into a kind of a raspberry and then all the way down into pink. There's everything from pure bright yellow to mustard and then down into um, gold or olive green. And all of that is on a black background. So I just thought that that was gorgeous and it's very wide. Um, so there's that chalet. And what would I make out of that chalet? Any of these tops. This is Simplicity 1461. These tunics have um, a seam down the back, so they do have fitting right there. I'm not sure about these necklines. They, that is weird to me. They've made it so that it's just supposed to kind of flop. And every time I look at that, it looks to me like people would think that collar was messed up, like there was a mistake. They're not really indicating that in the line drawings. If you will look right there, 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 there's a tiny little kind of wrinkle that they've put in there. But on this picture, you can see that it's kind of bowing out. But the rest of them with the slit neck, I really like. And this neckline, I just, I just don't know what I would do about that. I I don't like that floppy bit. And it would flop out like that. If you sewed it in a rayon chalet, that's exactly what it would do. It would flop out just like that. I can't tell if this is a chalet or a gauze. It almost looks like a gauze to me. But still, any lightweight tunic would be beautiful for that. Now this fabric is special. I bought it because it's beautiful. It is gold lots of gold there's the more intricate side I believe this is probably the right side that I'm showing you this is filmy and sheer it is not itchy or pokey it's soft it's really soft it's very nice this um, I don't believe is a natural fiber I don't think it is silk it's like a mesh. I'll show you the selvage. But this is a very comfortable synthetic and the lame is very comfortable. It's very soft, it is not pokey. That surprises me about this fabric because when I see fabric like this from a distance or if I were to see someone else wearing it, I would think, uh-uh, no ma'am. I'm not wearing that, that looks pokey. And I don't wear pokey fabric but it is not pokey. It's very soft and very comfortable. Um, so this pattern for view B right here, that has a skirt overlay, the contrast over skirt. And so something like this would be just beautiful. I think if you did that, you would get extra points for twirl factor and cuteness. So anything with a skirt overlay, I have lots of other patterns that have a skirt overlay. Um, I think that fabric would be too fiddly to do. I do have one pattern that is a shirt dress and um, it's meant to be sewn in like eyelet or those beautiful cutout fabrics and then the pattern comes with a slip. I think that would be too fiddly for that. I would not want to put a button placket, a collar, or buttonholes in that fabric. So I think stuff like this would be ideal. The other thing that comes to mind for this pattern, 
This pattern comes with um, both the instructions to make the belt and to make the cummerbund, and that would be a beautiful cummerbund. I mean, if you were having a wedding and you wanted to have all the grooms wear matching cummerbunds and that fit in with your um, your colors, I mean, that would be gorgeous. So that's there's just a lot you can do with that fabric. I wouldn't call it an everyday basic, obviously. When you have gold lame leaves on a sheer green background, we're talking special here, but um, it sure is pretty. So this one is probably my favorite to look at. Now my favorite, well, it's between the chalet and this one, but this one's definitely my favorite for the print. Is that not adorable, you guys? gingham and cherries and this is so nice this is a robert kaufman and i know that in the sewing community there's a lot of like i don't, I don't want to say snobby because that sounds mean there's a lot of i hear people saying regularly not to sew with quilting cottons and you know i hear people referring back to oh i made this first dress and it was from a quilting cotton and i quit sewing in quilting cottons I, I'd like to throw my opinion out there. Um, it depends on the kind of quilting cotton. If you're buying a 100% cotton from Walmart or from Joann's Quilting Wall, then you're gonna have, it's still gonna be comfortable to wear, it's gonna be 100% cotton, but it's also gonna be stiff and it's gonna be a little bit rough. When you move up to Michael Miller, that polka dotted skirt that I made with the big polka dots and the red buttons. That's a Michael Miller. That's just a quilting cotton. Um, this is probably a quilting cotton um, from Robert Kaufman, but this is a totally different ball game, you guys. So do not be afraid of quilting fabrics. Absolutely don't be afraid of them. Just make sure that you get a nice quality quilting fabric and from a reputable brand, Michael Miller or Robert Kaufman, Kona Bay Fabrics. Um, and you're gonna be really satisfied with what you've made. Provided you don't pick out something that called for a chalet, you should be completely satisfied with a high quality quilting cotton. So one of the things I'm considering stocking in the store, you'll have to let me know what you think about this. Robert Kaufman carries a fabric that is 100% cotton. It's called, and it's that weight. It's called Manchester. The whole line is called Manchester. It comes in eight jillion colors and it looks like rayon. Not to touch, but it, the print looks exactly like rayon. And um, it's a beautiful fabric and it is not expensive. And, um, and so it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's not expensive. It looks like rayon. Um, it comes in 8 million colors. And um, so I'm kind of considering carrying some of that. Um, it would be great for any kind of basics. It would be durable and well-made and it, it will have a soft hand and nice drape. Another thing about quality quilting fabrics is that they don't come out of the dryer looking like the Dickens. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that they look like they've been pressed. Obviously that's not true but um, they do hold up better than a cheap 100% cotton would. There's a difference. So that's, that's what I think. What would I sew with this? Any one of these, any of these. Um, this is Simplicity 1377. Um, it says S0564, but in the, on the inside you can always get the exact number. And it is 1377 if you like this pattern. I have made the pants twice last year, and I've made View D, which is this top, last year. I made the top out of a handkerchief linen. That's a dream to wear. And I made the pants out of a couple of different fabrics. Um, one out of a bottom weight chambray, probably Robert Kaufman Brussels washer linen, which is 55% linen, 45% rayon. That's probably what that was. Um, and then 100% cotton um, twill in a bottom weight. So that would be a great pattern for that. Now, 
have 501 subscribers. At least the last time I looked, I did. And I'm so excited by that, and I'm so grateful to all of you for hanging in with me and for being so very, very kind. Everyone is so kind and thoughtful and supportive in the comments. I just couldn't be happier to be a part of this community. I just love it. Um, please don't ever think that I'm only here for Mayfield Fabrics. If we close the store down, I will continue my YouTube channel. I love the give and take. I love seeing what everyone else is making. I love seeing your fabric hauls and your pattern hauls and hearing about your triumphs and your failures. It's the relationship for me that I'm after. Sales are good, that's fantastic, but I have a full-time job and so does my husband. Um, so it's not like I'm desperate for my store to work. It isn't my only livelihood. I want it to work. Um, it would be nice for it to work through retirement. And besides, we're having a ball with it. It's really a fun thing for Troy and I to do get together and learn. We've pretty much done everything wrong. Um, and we just go back and fix it. And um, it's fun, that learning curve, because at our point in our careers, we pretty much know what we're doing, right? I mean, there's always room to learn new techniques, new strategies, new curriculums, and all of that stuff. But we're not learning anything completely new. I mean, it's not like we're learning how to fly an airplane or something that we, you know, that is utterly new. And so this has been a real uh, fun journey for us, and we want to continue it. So, 500 subscribers. I would like to do a giveaway, and I would like to offer one of my uh, subscribers a $25 gift certificate to Mayfield Fabric. Um, you do not have to be a subscriber. I'm not going to check that, you guys. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, I don't, I don't want to send you through a bunch of hoops. Uh, you will have to make a comment, otherwise I have no way to draw your name. Um, it would be cool if you went and looked at the store to see if there's anything you liked, but I'm not going to say you have to go look at the store and say what would you want and then come back here and tell me what you'd want. And what. I'm not doing any of that. I just want to thank you for being with me and for watching my videos and for commenting and letting me be a part of your life and letting me have conversations with you. Um, that's what I want to do. So $25 gift certificate to Mayfield Fabric, anything in the store, vintage patterns, new fabric, or vintage fabric. It doesn't matter. Um, you pick out what you want. If you go over $25, we'll reimburse you $25. Um, if you don't, we'll just send you your whole order, um, whatever. And I also wanted to throw in this um, indie pattern. This is from Blue Ginger Doll Patterns. I don't think these guys are around anymore. So um, this is not a dress that would be readily available, I don't think. Um, there's the line drawings. This dress goes from size four with a bust of 30 and a half, a waist of 23, and a hip of 33, up to size 24 with a 50 inch bust, a 42 and a half inch waist and a 52 and a half inch hip. So I feel like this is a very inclusive pattern. It does read a little bit vintage, but it depends on the fabric you choose. This is not an obviously vintage style dress like the one that I showed you uh, for the overskirt. Um, so $25 and we will toss this into your order. And that's it. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I hope that you are enjoying your summer and that you're getting out and enjoying your friends and doing lots of fun stuff. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will probably do the drawing in about a week. I don't want to drag it out too far. So what is today? Tuesday? Next Tuesday or Wednesday, just watch the videos and I will put um, giveaway winners, you know, at the front of the video so that you know that that's the one um, that has that in it. All right. Thank you guys. You have a great day.